Well, students, and especially parents, it's time to raise the roof, because now we finally get to use that old-school algorithm that many of us were taught when we were very young, long time ago. And I'm also going to show you why it works, a YouTube exclusive. The problem we'll be using is the same one as before, 12 times 13. Here's the array, 12 times 13, with the four partial products, and I'll show you where those four partial products are in the answer when we do this algorithm. And here you'll see how all one, two, three methods are connected. So when we're doing the algorithm, we start with the number on the bottom in the ones column, and we multiply it times the number in the top on the ones column, and we just write down the answer. In this case, it's two times three, which is six. If it was a two digit number, we would carry it over here, and I'll show you that in the next video. But we're keeping things, things simple here. So now, we take this number and we multiply it times the number in the tens column. Well, three times one is three. Easy enough so far? Now when I was taught this method, we called this a placeholder, and I even had some teachers who had me write an X here. And I don't know where they got that from, and I'm, later on, when I became a teacher, I saw that people were putting zero, so I picked up that habit at least. Um, but it's not a placeholder at all, it's actually a zero. We put it before we multiply, and then when we do, we're just going to multiply the digit in the tens column by the digit in the ones column up above. So 1 times 2 is 2. But do you realize this 0 is here because we're really doing 10 times 2, and 10 times 2 is 20. Just like that earlier method uh, when we were doing the long algorithm. Same kind of idea here, but it's easier to teach kids that 1 times 2 is 2. So students, whenever you're doing this and you go to the next column, put down a 0, and then just do your regular multiplying. And of course, if we did the number of the tens column, then we're going to multiply the number in the tens column after this the second time, and 1 times 1 is 1. Then we take our two answers here and we do 6 plus 0 is 6, 3 plus 2 is 5, and nothing plus 1 is 1. So we get 156, same as when we got our four partial products, whether we did it by drawing the um, array or whether we did by finding them using this rows and column method. But why does that work? Well, if you notice, I've color-coded these answers here in these partial products and the answers in our algorithm. We first started out by multiplying the 3, right? That was the number in the ones column in the bottom row. Well, if you look over here in our array, you will see that 3 is represented right here. In fact, let me draw this as a permanent line so you can see that. There's the 3. That's not a very good 3. There's the 3, okay? Um, when we multiplied it by the 2, well, we were multiplying it by the 2 right here. So there's your 3 times 2. And guess what? That 3 times 2 is a 6 here in blue. It's a 6 right here. It's also a 6 in this one. So parents, I'm sorry. You might think this old school method is true and this new modern Common Core is a bunch of garbage. Well, Common Core is just showing you where this comes from. Yes, it's a lot. <laughs> We've probably had that debate before. Um, not every kid picks this up easily. Well, maybe not every kid picks this up easily as well, but hopefully between these three methods, they'll be able to understand and grasp and understand why we're getting the answers that we do. But anyway, on to the rest of this explanation. So there was our 3 times 2 equals 6. Well, then we had 3 times 1, but it's not 3 times 1. It's not a little tiny 1. It's an entire 10. Where is that represented? That's right here. Let me show you. There's the 10. Okay? So this was actually 3 times 10, and the answer is 30. Well, we don't need to put a 0 there. It's not going to change anything. So we just write the 3. So we're really doing 3 times 10 is 30, just like it was here. 3 times 10 is 30. Amazing, isn't it? Let's go on. The next thing we learn in the standard algorithm is to multiply this number. Well, this number is a 10, represented right here, all right? And we first multiply it by the number in the ones column up above. 
you can see where that is up there, can't you? Some of you are already figuring this out. There's the 2. There's the 10. Okay? And when we multiply two ones by 10, we get 20. So it's in purple here, it's in purple there, it's in purple here. Same answer all the way across. And guess what? When we multiply 10, or this one times this one, we're really multiplying, say it now, that's right, 10 times 10. And there it is, 10 times 10. And guess what? 10 times 10 is 100. So this answer was 100, but we don't write down 100 because the zeros aren't going to change anything here. So we just say 1 times 1 is 1. All right? There's the 100 here. It's there. And it's there. So all of these little partial products, did you notice there was 1, 2, 3, 4 of them? And there was 1, 2, 3, 4 partial products here. So this algorithm takes this and just makes it a little easier to write it down. Um, that's all there is to it. It's 156, it's 156, and when you just look at the algorithm by itself, here's how we were taught, right? 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, placeholder, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, add them up. So it's going to work whether you memorize it this way, or whether you understand that you're really doing 10 times 10, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the right answer. But we want the kids to understand that it really is 10 times 10 because that's going to give them some great mathematical thinking in the future. Speaking of the future, in our next video, I'm going to show you how to do this nasty guy. 75 times 36. Tune in.